Mm. You guys out there all across the world in the US, to Canada, Europe, all over the Caribbean. I told you we were gonna be here today at the Tower of State, which is in St. Paul. And I have with me Isabel Springer. And this is her estate and it a family estate and I'm wearing blue to go with the <laughs> blue tea. Um, today and I told you about the blue. Remember we talked about the blue flowers. So here they are. So Isabel, tell us a little bit about this estate and what we do here. Well, the Tower Estate is actually um, it's a large property that has a whole variety of spice and fruit trees and an organic farm, as well as we have one of the few remaining intact great houses in Grenada that's currently over 100 years old wow. and we do lots of fun things wow. here. Wow. We do culinary safaris so you can come and learn how to cook with Chef Belinda. We have one June 5th and June 6th. Make your reservation soon and yes. come to this beautiful place and we're going to tour the gardens and tour the uh, estate and we're going to cook together. So, yeah. and, right? Okay. and we have art workshops on the mm -hmm. same day as well as interactive sessions where you can watch artists doing their work. So it should be a lot of fun for everybody. Um, we also host weddings here. But one of the key things we are is that we are the home of the blue tea. So today we actually have a bit of the flowers that mm -hmm. form the components of the blue tea. And this gives you an, an idea. Oh, yes. <laughs> I think, you know what? I'm going to go boil some water. Yeah. Um, we... Right over here, we're going to just get the, get the um, water ready. I did. I had it on just before. So we're going to show you just the beginnings of this. Before we get started. Whoa, look at that. So you can see from the color, well the blue flower itself has a wonderful indigo blue color and you wow, can see that. that it quite rapidly begins so the process one. of infusion. Wow, we're gonna have some of that later on um, today. I'm, I can't wait. Yes. Yesterday we had lemongrass, today we're going to have blue tea. Yes, folks, blue tea. And it's really, really, really good for you. And um, I can, I'm looking forward to it. But I want to let you know today we have a whole host of things going on. We have two chefs here, a traditional and a contemporary. And we have Chef Miguel again. You guys met him yesterday and know he's a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I know it was exciting. I know you learned a lot. And today you're going to learn even more. And we have Chef Nathaniel, who's our resident vegan chef. And he holds a company called Roots International, and he's the chef, the head chef. And he does a lot of different things. Today we have a secret. Remember I told you we were going to have breakfast today? And we're going to utilize one of our items that are in our national dish. Come, come with us. We're going to show you. Follow me. We're going to go a little bit to the garden as well. And um, you're going to see all the great fauna that is here. tiny pineapple right here look at that and as we go on our way we're gonna be cooking outside today remember i promised outdoor cooking it's happening today oh how are you and we have our, our friendly friend. escort and security guard <laughs> <laughs> so here we are <clears throat> chef oh. we're getting started we're getting started we have a lot of fun look what's happening here we have chef miguel as i mentioned uh, he Hi was guys. going to be here. You remember him? And nice to see you guys again. Thank you for tuning in. And then there's Chef Nathaniel. Yeah, wow, our nice resident nice vegan nice chef. Nice. So we're looking forward to it. I'm going to get back there and we're going to do some cooking together. Oh, dip under the trees. It is a wonderful atmosphere, isn't it? Um, so nice. what are we making today, our Chef Miguel? Well, I'm going to be doing for you a local tradition where we have some roasted breadfruit with some mm. smoked Tell herring. Right, and I'm also gonna be doing a, a local cocoa tea. Oh, right, you know, I mean, are we doing the cocoa tea first or no? Oh, we're gonna do shucks. it, we're so gonna have, have to it with our breakfast, okay? Okay, okay. right. <laughs> I know you, I know you're one of you love cocoa tea, I do love cocoa Belinda, tea. right? And I'm guessing you might even might you might want to go the whole pot, but I, I might, I might. I'll give you a cup so you can have some, great. And yes. Chef Nathaniel, what are you making for us today? Well, blessings, blessings today. 
we taking the traditional vibes on a more eye side. Oh, <laughs> eye Okay, tell us. So, we're going to be roasting off some bread fruit. Um, stew that down in a bowl in turmeric, coconut sauce, Ooh. with some sweet callaloo and ginger scented garden Did you hear that? Ginger scented. You can't smell. You don't have smell of vision yet. But if you could, oh, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So, I am here. I am going to be your um, your assistant. So if you need anything at all, just let me know what I can mix up, cut up, um, taste. Uh, I know that. I know you're really looking forward yeah, to the taste. Yeah, looking forward to the part. taste. I'm looking forward to that so much. Okay, so we're going to get started because we don't want to take too long. I want you guys to really get the full benefit of um, what we're doing here today. We're focusing on both uh, traditional and as um, Chef Nathaniel said, a little bit traditional, but much contemporary yes. okay and we're utilizing all the natural um herbs and spices that we found right here on the estate we picked the kalaloo this morning the bread food as well and so uh, and look at these carrots oh my god look at those fresh fresh fresh, fresh, fresh out carrots. Of the garden. <laughs> right out of the garden we cleaned them though okay <laughs> oh and of course from the herb garden over here we have uh, peppers basil thyme and my favorite we call them mm, such we call them seasoning peppers or pimento. Very nice. Oh, and this is what's going inside inside the cocoa tea. Yes, it is. Wow. We have a locally organically grown cocoa, right? And then we have the cocoa. Then so we use that natural cocoa mm -hmm. to make our lovely cocoa balls. We also have some fresh spices, and we also well, cinnamon spice, right? Right, the cinnamon stick, right? And we also have some bay leaf. Ah, isn't there a bay leaf tree right there? Uh, it was picked right wow. from this baby tree okay. right here. Wow. So as we see here, um, growing up, right, depends on the time of the day or the time of the morning. You, you don't always have time to go. Well, I grew up lighting mm -hmm. my own cold pot, right. right, to roast the breadfruit, or you could have a small fireside or so. Oh, like right? that one over there. Like that one right here. Wow. Right. So as we look right here, we just give it a, a quick turn around. This is how we roast breadfruit here in Grenada. Right? Much as less, well, as far as the Caribbean. Right? We have our cold pot, right? We have our local charcoal that we just put the put right on there and get that nice dark color all around, about just about 20 minutes. And then you have your nicely roasted breadfruit. And the other way that we also do it, we also could use the stove top. Of course, you're going to have to do a lot of cleaning it in the end, but we also do it on the stove top also. So this has been here for the past um, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. right? And every time a side gets dark, you keep turning it and turning it. You keep rotating it so it cooks quite evenly. And you have your wonderful, nice, soft, sweet breadfruit. Okay. Soft and sweet. Soft and sweet. Okay, cool. All right, so we're going to get started. And it's not like it's chopped and we're going to go, go. But we're going to get started. I'm going to help you and I'm going to help you. I'm going to learn a lot myself today. Um, and you guys are going to learn amazing stuff. And for all those who know um, about the breadfruit, you get to see it again. And you get to enjoy us, uh, enjoy watching us prepare it. Okay? Yep. So um, I wish you could come um, down to Grenada now, but you should make your reservations um, and make it here. It's only two days that you have the quarantine if you're fully vaccinated. And you can spend some time right here with us at the Tower Estate at our culinary safari or at any of our um, culinary destinations in Grenada. Wonderful. Let's get started. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go right ahead and start chopping up my onions, my tomatoes, my peppers, my herbs. We okay. have some thyme, we have some chives, we have some bell peppers, we have some garlic. Okay. Right? And we're gonna... there? Oh, Ooh. coconut oil. Coconut oil. Remember what I told you about that yesterday? Mm. Don't heat it's it too much, too much. It's a die for. I'm looking forward to it. And Nathaniel, what are we going to get started in doing well, over here? We're going to get started on the seasoning because you know that's the essential part of the ital pot. Wow. <laughs> so we're going to dice up and chop up some of these fresh herbs that we get from the garden. Some rosemary and thyme, some chives, basil, peppers. Um, and then we'll, you know, say oh. we had some coconut blended yes. already prepared for you guys. That will be the little secret to the pot coming up. <laughs> oh, very good. Okay, so go ahead and get started. If you need me to jump in and do anything. Sure. Um, here, I uh, just need a little cutting board or something in the middle, but I guess we have our plates ready to go. Yes, we do. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave you 
to this for a few minutes. Um, you go ahead and talk to our audience and let them know a little bit about yourself, Nathaniel. What do you, I don't, don't cut yourself now. <laughs> I don't have to look at the camera. Um, so what do you do here in Grenada? What can, where can we see you? What can, where can we experience this wonderful food? Well, right now, we are operating out of the coconut shop in Cali's. Oh. Um, where you can get your daily meals from 12 o'clock. You can either get a soup or a heavy food. Okay. Um, we do... And it's all, it's all item? Yeah, straight yes. plan this. Straight plan this. No okay. mix of food. Okay, great. Um, so basically, I started cooking since I was 16. But, um, yes, I read that. Yeah. But I recently started eating Ita. Okay. I recently started living that kind of healthy lifestyle, you know, plant-based and everything. So I'd say approximately four years. Um, now, what made you change? What, what made you make that decision? Well, to be honest with you, yeah, I'll honestly, say... Yeah, <laughs> From the, the, the choo choo, I search for something more in, in life, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and again, to me, the most time. Okay. And you say, Well, Nathaniel, you had to start to eat healthy. Okay. With a clean body, you get a clean mind. And with a clean mind, the blessing just flow in. <laughs> okay. So, well, I started, I say, What advice can you give to someone out there who wants to like transition over from eating, um, you know, heavy diet, um, a meat-based diet to a plant-based diet, what, 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 kind, what would you say to them? How would you say to make that transition? Well, me personally, I would say that you have to start in your mind first. Ah. So, for you, the decision has to be for you, not for anybody else. Mm -hmm. Not for the trend, not for the likes on Facebook, you know, mm -hmm. or going healthy or whatever. It has to be something that you desire, you know? and. If you want to live, you have to eat empty. Oh, yeah, that's true. And we all want to live, don't and we? Everybody wants to live. That's right. So, I say when you look into food, don't just look at food as, as greens, but look at it deeper than that. Mm -hmm. Look at it for the nutritional aspects, because from a pepper, you get nutrients and vitamins. From a garlic, you get the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, when you eat it, sometimes you might taste, but then you just start. But you have to get overstanding as to what that's yeah. doing for you. Overstanding. The overstanding. <laughs> Not the understanding, but the overstanding. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for that. I think it's an important um, for everyone to know out there that living in Grenada, you can live this way. Um, and everything is here available for you to enjoy. And you can just go out into your garden, pick your peppers, pick, um, dig for your carrots, pick your um, breadfruit. You know, pick your pumpkin even, and you can make something that's organic and all natural, plant-based. Yeah. So, tell me, what's what, what's happening? We're, we're making smoked herring. Yes, that's we what are. We're making? Okay. No, the the thing about using smoked herring and what the fact I used to dread growing up was yeah. that when my mom has to cook it, I will just have to be the one to clean it. Oh yeah, and I think right? I think I think that is like the most difficult. The thing. most difficult thing mm -hmm. ever because. I was once told you, you're not having smoke herring unless you're actually eating the bones. Oh my. <laughs> right? At first I didn't understand, right? Until... You realized there was so much bone. <laughs> you realized there was so much bone. But okay. it is a part of the smoke herring. If you're having smoke herring, you don't get a piece of bone in it, you should wonder what you're eating. Wow. Well, right? at least you know what you're eating. Yes. Right? right? It's, not, so, it's not plastic. It's actually all natural. All right? natural. Then right here in Grenada. Right? Mm -hmm. And the name speak for itself is smoked Herring, mm -hmm. right? It's done on a, on a slow um, heat. It's smoked for sometimes a couple of hours, sometimes like many people do it different ways. So basically this here is a finished product, what you get, right? Mm -hmm. It's also cured in salt also so that it lasts longer, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's similar to the sausage, but this has a, a, a more of a burst of that smoky, mm -hmm. good flavor that you're looking for, right? But the thing is, once you prepare it, you have to boil it first, right? And then what will happen, all the meat will start to flake off of the bone. Mm -hmm. You right? know, I heard um, that, I understand that how this smoked salted fish uh, came to be was by um, the people traveling on a ship in the 1700s. Yes. And they didn't have, of course, 
the refrigeration. And so they salted all the meats and they salted all their fish so they can um, have protein on the way over to the Caribbean. So that's how I think that we ended up um, with salted fish. Um, and now we do it here. Um, yes, it's right a part of our, our menu. Yes. We, salt, we, salt, we salt our own fish right here uh, in Grenada. Preservation. Yes. Great. So. What I, what, I, what I went ahead and did, mm -hmm, tell me. right, it took me a good while, but I went ahead and prepared some smoke herring in advance, okay, okay. right, so, so I don't have to spend hours uh, picking, the picking the bones okay. from the, the meat itself. Right, so I'm just cutting up my, my herbs and spices right now that will go into um, our smoke herring. Okay, and those, right. those spices are um, we have thyme. We have some say. thyme, some pimento mm -hmm. pepper, mm -hmm. some bell peppers, okay. we have some our local basil, we have some chives, okay, and good. that's what we're going to go ahead and put into our smoke herring right about now. So, do you need me to go, go and get a bowl for you, or are we we're all set? Um, we're currently all set. Okay, yes. so I just did. I have nothing to do. Ah, chef, no man, no man, you have anything to do. Also, tell me, what can yeah, I do for you? If you want, you can come over and chop up some of the chives great, on great. the cutting board still. Wonderful. Yeah. Pumpkin here, so okay. You know, okay, pumpkin. pumpkin. Show, show them how to peel them. From the cab, from the garden, you know. Back time, back in the days, we got and clean, and then you just pick up the pumpkin, short knife, and peel. But don't really try it at home. Like that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, unless they're professional, like yourself. Professional, you, professional, you know. But so, you know, it's, it's, I'm surprised about how many people aren't professional, but they do do it like that, and they do it very well. Through, yeah. Yeah. They govern it. <laughs> So, what else goes in this? Which, what are we making here right now? What's the first thing that we're making? So right now, we're going to put on the callaloo to stew them okay. for like a while. Because you now, the callaloo needs to cook. If callaloo isn't cooked properly, mm -hmm. it itches the throat, you know? Okay. So you want, want to make sure that that cook. That will take the longest. We had the bread feet on the fire side roasting already. Mm -hmm. As that come off, we will throw on, throw on the um, cumin sauce. Okay. Yeah. And the turmeric you have, oh, we have turmeric yeah, here? Awesome turmeric that we just blend up fresh oh, already, that. you know. And that's, that you could find that right here right on the Right in the garden, mm -hmm. right in the garden, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know about your knife here. It's, <laughs> Kinda, uh, it's not, like not as... <laughs> well, the key, you folks, see? make sure that your... Your knives are sharp. Your knives are sharp. Yes, yes, yes. And then all, for all those people who, um, you know, are not, pro you know, professional, um, you have to really make sure that you keep your tools up the floor and your fingers out of the way. So you keep them straight. Okay, so what can I put this in sure. here? Yeah, you put it in the big bowl. Mm -hmm. we'll do. Okay. We'll just put on the fire and drain the oil and simmer down some seasoning. All right, simmer. I love the, I love the sound of that. Because when we simmer, mm. we get to really, yes. really blend all the flavors into our pot, right? Flavor explosion. Okay, do we have a, a, a lighter? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to try it. Yeah, man. Stay on here. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case I catch a fire. <laughs> and to start the seasoning, we're using some other coconut oil. Natural thing, good for the stomach, good for the system. But we don't want to get too hot. Okay, so I'm lower it down. We're cooking live right outside here. At the if tower I may of ask state. a quick question. Uh, when you say you want to get too hot, why is that? Because you don't want to get, when you, when you Heat up the coconut oil too much, you burn all the vibes from it, you burn all the flavor, you burn all ah, the okay. from it, you know? Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Because that's you said it and Chef Miguel said it, so it's just, a, you know, just to make sure as to why. I think you want to burn the You gotta ensure that the flavor that you're looking for is kept in the food. Because whenever you burn something, you, if it burn garlic, if it burn um, olive oil, the flavor that you will naturally get from the oil is gone. Right? And you have that burnt smoky flavor from it at that point in time and that's not what you're looking for. So with oils, they burn at different temperatures. temperatures. Yes, okay, so something like olive oil would burn at how? 
Um, okay. Well, Chef Belinda will have better understanding of. So you're things. you're different. So we're talking oils. So we're talking about coconut oil, olive oil, mm -hmm. sesame Vegetable oil, oil. And, you know, different oils and the different temperatures that they actually start burning. Yeah, the best way to cook in the for the temperature of the oil. Well, they all have um, burning points and yeah. in, in, in different um, heating uh, capacities. And um, co uh, coconut oil is one of the ones that have the highest. At 500 degrees. Um, I can't quote every single one, but um, at the moment, but the olive oil is um, has the has the least. Okay. Um, we do sesame oils. Um, you know, it has a very distinct flavor, so you don't you want to keep that flavor because it's already kind of toasted sesame seeds. So you don't need to uh, have an additional heat. We use that in salads a lot, right? In these recipes. Okay, it looks like we got something on the stove, guys. Yes. Yeah. Just one more question about the oil, just, you know, I don't want to take for too long, but when oil starts to smoke, does that mean it's too hot or it's just right? It is. It's just right, just right when it starts to smoke. Right, but when, okay. it, when it sets on fire, it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you're right about that. <laughs> so be careful over there, all right. Um, so you're good to go over here, do you need me to chop up anything else, sir? Yeah, sure. I know you're good? how good it will be with the color blue and the knife, but... <laughs> I would have to go get my knife. For that one. So, let's see. So, so this is so basically, um, Chef Miguel, this is really something that's not really, it's not in a, a long cooking process. No, it's not. It's something that you can bar the, um, the, the, you know, the cleaning of the fish. It's something you can put together relatively quick, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. So this is something that traditionally that we um, eat in Grenada for for breakfast. Breakfast or even dinner. Dinner. Yes, I've had it for dinner as well. Right. It's a it's a juve right? morning dish. Juve morning dish. It's, it's a juve morning dish. <laughs> you know that traditionally it's yes. it's juve morning. Okay. It's roast breadfruit and and oh, smoked so everything. Okay. Smoke okay. okay. We're gonna use okay. coconut oil here in our pot, <laughs> and we're gonna start to saute up okay. our. We've got sauteing going on over there. We got <laughs> sauteing going on over here. Boy, I can't wait. Now, I left some of the herbs back and the tomatoes back because we didn't really want it to overcook, right? Now, smoke is a thing. You don't want to have it on the fire cooking for half an hour, an hour, just there boiling down. You want to get that fresh flavor, that smoke flavor from it. So you don't want to really kill all of that flavor by overcooking it, right? right? So right. I'm just going to go ahead and saute up most of our onion or garlic or chives or thyme or bell peppers or pimento peppers here, okay, great. right? Let that sit and sweat so all the flavor comes out. Yeah, it comes to mix together. Right, oh, and... That smells amazing. Yes, it does smell really amazing. We go, go ahead and flip our breakfast right here. Make sure it doesn't burn for too long. And when you see that color on the outside, that doesn't mean it's burnt, right? It, it does not mean that it's yeah. burnt. Some people who are not familiar might think so. But inside, it's nice to good. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. A lot going around here. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot. Smell the food. But cook up! You got me fully hungry. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add in our tomatoes now. Mm -hmm. So, do you want these uh, tomatoes to actually cook down? Or? No, no oh, not entirely. Look at that. Camera man has a Alright, <laughs> <laughs> okay. so what we're gonna do, I've already um deboned the smoke herring, but what we're gonna do, we're just gonna give it a quick chop. Alright, because you want it to be evenly distributed. All the flavors mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. go in nice and properly. Yeah. Mm, may I taste that? Go ahead. Nice and smoky. Nice and smoky. So you have everything in the pot over there? So I mean, not everything yet. Not everything, but next is going to go in is the... You don't really want to put in the cook on the smoke as yet. In our smoke herring right now and you want it to be a nice consistency so 
what we're going to do is we're going to add just a little bit more of some coconut oil and if you realize i'm not putting any adding any salt to wow. our smoked herring here because it does have that little bit of salty flavor to it but not too overpowering all right and this is here is what we're looking for all right okay. so i'm just gonna set this aside and i'm gonna go right ahead and start to do my cocoa tea, cocoa tea. All right. <laughs> right so i'm gonna just go ahead and get some some water in this pot chef belinda yeah. can we just give a shout out to rhn she's commented saying yes flavors we are loving the vibes oh uh, i know who you are you're <laughs> anonymous that are a chin but i know exactly who you are and of course thank you we wouldn't be able to make this whole thing possible without you um so shout out right back at you and um on that note i also want to mention that um chef miguel yes. the mom says she's viewing <laughs> yes, yes. right i was taught well by my mom growing up um growing up i was always the one in the kitchen with her like i never got whether I like it or not, I never got a chance to say, okay, well, I want to go outside and play. Oh, wow. Right? Eventually, I, I get to see the importance of actually learning how to cook. Well, look, learning how be, to, yeah, exactly, I would not right. be here today if right. it wasn't for my mom. Right? She taught me how to mix proper flavors, how to, mm -hmm. how to utilize what we have around the house. Mm -hmm. Right? What, I used to go down by the river and, and pick breadfruit. I used to go down and, and get my, my fruits, my sapodilla, go mm -hmm. to the garden, dig up yam. And that is what I grew up doing. So, right? mom... You do you have any tips for him today? Let us know. We'll come back to you. You can send a message. Let us know what he's doing wrong or what you would, or what you would do differently. Okay. What I was taught is very much instilled. Yes, I'm sure. And just a quick question regarding the smoke herring. I remember, um, I think there's a, another way of doing the smoke herring where you cut up all the ingredients after you just pour the oil in, right? That's, 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 yes. um, that's a sauce. Oh, that's the sauce? Okay. Yes. All right. Right, so there are different ways of doing it, right? Um, because we're going to be serving it with our breakfast, you, you want that to be nice and, and soft, soft, not too yeah. much of a crunch because right. the breakfast on its own is nice and creamy, so you want that nice oh, goodness gosh. to be want the okay, okay, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop oh, it. Stop. So I know, so I know that all of you are so hungry out there. I know you want to be here. Make those reservations, get to Grenada, and if you're in Grenada, give us a call. Four three five one five seven nine. Okay. So what I'm gonna Flavors of what I'm gonna go ahead and do mm -hmm. is we're gonna go ahead and put we have our, our sauce pot right okay. here. That's with, for the cocoa tea. That's for the cocoa tea, right? And the thing is, many people do the cocoa balls in different sizes, right? So here, I like my cocoa my cocoa tea to be nice and rich and full of flavor, mm -hmm. right? I do not want it to be too running, too too heavy on the cocoa itself. So I had just about six cup of water right here. Right, and to every cocoa ball, based on the size, I put two cups of water. Right, so I'm just gonna drop those in here. So that means you have six cups of uh, cocoa tea there? Oh, yes, I do. Okay, so and four, four is just five, for you. One, five, seven, nine. If you want a cup of co cocoa tea, give us a call. Right, so All I'm right. gonna go ahead and add in some, some spices. Right, just about two leaves of the bay leaf because, or we call it hanging in the bottom. You don't want it to overpower the the cocoa itself. And I'm also going to add in some local nutmeg. This here is the, the nutmeg nut, right, that we use. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and grate in a little bit of nutmeg because you want that cocoa tea to be nice and rich in flavor. Utilizing our local herbs and spices right here that we grow in Grenada. Can you tell us some more benefits of um, the cocoa? Um, well, the cocoa is good in antioxidant, right? It helps um, cool down the body. It helps hydrate the body. It helps. Um, it's great for your heart. It's great for your heart, um, right? And the, the cinnamon for the high blood pressure, right? And um, also the cocoa for the high blood pressure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it brings down your pressure. So you know, like when you have your cocoa tea in the evening and the morning, that yes. you have like a relaxed kind of feeling just okay. just yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Oh, we don't want boiling up a storm over here. <laughs> yes, yes. And I think Coco Norman does that, right? This little pet and chain just ball over and dirt up every time. Yes, it does. So I'm just going to load this down some more. Let's go check out Chef Nathaniel. Let's see what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
can smell that cookie right now. It's just, oh my god. I can't wait to have some. So can I have some? No, you can't. And the turmeric coconut sauce. Okay. You want to season down, you want to sort it down the seasoning, and then we're going to add the turmeric, which I blend it up with a little bit of water, and let us simmer down with the seasoning, get some flavor. So tell me, what's turmeric? A lot of people don't know. I mean, well, I didn't bring a extra one today, okay. but turmeric is, is similar to the ginger, a tea plant, mm -hmm. a root. Um, where we plant it and it takes approximately six or six or seven months to grow to maturity. Um, we have it growing in our yard, in our backyard. Right up there. We like bush. Mm -hmm. A lot of people see it and don't use it, but it's a very healthy thing. We use it in medicine, we use it in facial mm -hmm. consumption, the whole work. So you're looking to get beauty right. tips. Turmeric. Yes. You're looking to get healthy. There it is. It's, <laughs> it's, it's inflammatory. It's the right yeah. anti-inflammatory, so it reduces inflammation in your body. And so um, I've even a friend of mine. He brushes his teeth with turmeric. Good for your gums. Yes. Yeah. So, so it has so many different uses. <laughs> All the vegetables and things from the garden healthy. Right. Okay. And this is what it looks like when it's ground up. This is what it looks yeah. like blended. Yes. So as you can see, it's still a little. So most of the people who are tuning in from around the world, they're not going to get turmeric like how we have it here in Grenada as a root. They'll get it as the powder. Yeah. And can they do ex the same things that you're doing with it, with the powder? Yeah, you yeah, can do the same Absolutely. thing. Because basically what um, I believe Chef Nathaniel does is just grated it into um, that form. Yeah. So um, they, when you see it in the powder, they've dehydrated the um, turmeric and then the ground it just like they were ground flour and then there you have it and it's it's quite potent even in its ground form and we can have like turmeric tea as oh, well yeah. well we have a special tea the golden tea golden yeah. tea i know a lot of people hear about it before it's the same turmeric that they use mm -hmm. turmeric with a little bit of coconut milk or you know almond milk if they're using the animal products mm -hmm. then <laughs> you know um but turmeric is something i think that is one of the foundation uh medicine and foundation a lifestyle for people in the Caribbean, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Granny used to always say, you, you join something here, drink some turmeric tea or sap it to the turmeric, you know, yeah. so it's easy. It. Okay, and what do we call it locally here, turmeric? Saffron. Saffron. Yeah, okay. yeah. But as you know, all you other people who are out there in the UK, possibly, or in Europe, saffron is also it's something else. So we call it saffron here, but there's a saffron thread comes from a flower, right? But uh, we call it saffron. Oh, wow. Some real action cabinet on this side. <laughs> so that's just the start of the sauce that we're doing right here. Look at this. These are with the, uh, yeah. Yeah, I find okay. so. All right. <laughs> want to make sure, because this is doing well over here. So, you just want it to get, you want the heat now to caramelize the onions and the garlic and everything. So when you throw in the turmeric, you had a flavor done separately, you know what I mean? So any oils you put in there? Yeah, Mr. we don't use too much oil, just a okay. little bit of oil. Okay. So we don't want the, the top to be oil. Oh, oily. Oil, 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 Turmeric inside of this here, so now. I'll see you when you're using turmeric. Try to have a glove close by. Yeah. It's something that is skin a lot. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to say that. I was going to say, <laughs> with the turmeric, it does. Yeah, yeah. But on the flip side to that, if you're using turmeric, so you can get it like as um, as a butter, you can mix it down with shea or cocoa fat, mm -hmm. and it actually gives you a lovely glow. Just don't wear white, <laughs> <laughs> but it gives you a lovely glow to your skin. Well, I would think so. It has, yeah. it has the, um, the natural uh, yellow coloring. You know, coloring. When, when we have people who come here as guests and visitors, and they haven't got that sun yet, yeah. they could use a little bit oh, of yeah, the turmeric. I can imagine that it's also probably good as well for even 
um, when they're getting sunburned because it does uh, help with inflammation, as does the aloe vera. So, oh, here goes the yes. coconut piece. Yes, inside here now we have the coconut. Same thing, fresh. Did fresh you prepare blended. this yourself, the yeah. coconut? This one, you know, you blend it up, you add a little bit of it inside of here. The coconut milk, it doesn't want to boil the coconut milk too much. Because mm -hmm. when you boil the coconut milk too much, you get an oil. That's how, well, I think Chef and Miguel did some speaking on making yes. coconut oil yesterday. Wow, you were watching. <laughs> so, so maybe we should maybe do a session on uh, making on making coconut oil and making coconut should. milk? I'm making coconut milk. Yes. yes, folks, all those people in the U.S., all my friends out there, coconuts do grow on trees, but the milk? has to be made from the coconut. You just don't open the coconut, there's milk inside. You have to uh, add water and, and squeeze, uh, shred and then squeeze the um, water to get coconut milk. That's what you might see in the can. That's what he has done here. But if you don't have the fresh coconut, you, oh, yeah, we, all we all lie. We all lie call it. under a tree. Um, we can, you can go to the, uh, to the market and buy it in a can but you also can buy the fresh coconut as well. Okay? And uh, if you stick Look at that color. It's squeezing out the rest. Yeah. Look at that. The coconut milk, uh, as Sabrina always tell me, go through the hooks until they finish cooked. Exactly. Because they can always add water to the hooks and squeeze it again until they realize that you're not seeing that white juice coming from it, you know? So mm -hmm. you don't chew the, you never chew the hooks until you finish. Because you're chewing away some flavor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, I to do that. and I feel like a lot of people don't know how to um, prepare the coconut, right? To make the coconut milk. So many years ago, and I don't see them now, my grandmother, she would have like, it almost looks like a cutlass and at the end it had like a jagged edge and she would sit on it and then wow. grate it yes. grate oh, the yes, coconut yes, yes. like she just cut the coconut in half mm -hmm. and you sit there and grate out all the husks and you gotta wash those fingers yeah, <laughs> yeah. Be careful with it. yeah. so um we're gonna go to the breadfruit yes oh, yeah. ready yes it wow, is look at that all right so what we're gonna do we're not going to be using the entire breadfruit. What you want to get is on the inside. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut this down. Mm. And when you open it up. Wow, look at that. And this here is what we're looking to get. Right, that nice, soft. Oh, wow, I have to taste this. <laughs> I think I want to taste it too. Come on. Wow. That's <laughs> nice. Let's go. It's I, know you, I know you want to taste it too. But I've heard that it tastes great with butter as well. Yes, it does. Right? Whenever I had to go mm -hmm. outside and cut wow. and roast breadfruit, I will always have my butter there right by my side. Mm -hmm. So by the time the breadfruit reaches inside the house for my mom to finish preparing it, half is already gone. Wow. <laughs> and, and if you do have a little bit of leftover from the breadfruit, well, what, what do you do with that? What afterwards? we usually do, right? Breadfruit it can be stored in the refrigerator for a short time. But what we will do, the following either, either the night or the, the morning after, we will actually take the same breakfast and we will fry it. Right? And a little coconut and oil? With local coconut oil <laughs> yes, to, right. to bring out that flavor from oh, of it. Of course. Right? Um, so we're going to go ahead and just give this one more cut. So it gets straight from the skin, right? Yes, we could also eat straight from the skin too, right? Just simply break it off like this, right? Ah, I'll take a piece. There you go. So for somebody who's not from the Caribbean, okay, what could you liken the flavor and the texture of a breadfruit similar to? Well, for all those who are not familiar with the breadfruit, it's actually not sweet like fruit. It's more like, what would you call the texture of it? It's not a potato. Well, it's not a potato. It's starchy, not like a potato, but... But it's a, a nice, creamy, like a custard. That's right. But it has that nice, creamy custard flavor from it, right? It's, in a sense, almost similar to a sour syrup, but the flavor is different, right? There is more of a, a subtle, sweet flavor from mm -hmm. it, 
right it literally melts in your mouth right and it has that all the good starch and everything that you're looking for so you take out the space huh yeah you always take out the guts yes mm -hmm. right we don't eat the middle part right because that's basically where the seeds are mm -hmm. right and this here is very stringy and very hard at times so all we do we just take out as i'm going to show you here right now right so we're just gonna make sure we don't get much of the um the charred skin all right so we're just gonna cut and also, I, I have in the past let this uh, breadfruit get overripe. Just let it sit and, and get soft and soft. And as you do, it becomes sweeter and sweeter. And what you can do as it gets sweeter and sweeter, it's almost now at this point like actual sweet fruit. And what I have done with it, I've made ice cream, <laughs> breadfruit ice cream. Oh. We know okay. I've also made bre breadfruit punch, ah, right? Punch. I've also made mashed breadfruit right mm -hmm. there's so many different ways to actually utilize the breadfruit plant mm -hmm. right and the breadfruit itself you could do so many things with it and most people might only have it they only know breadfruit has to be in our local oil zone true Very right true. but breadfruit can be used for so many different things i know we do breadfruit chips as well breadfruit right? chips exactly so it's not only the french fries that right. you have we have the breadfruit chips as right. as well we have our local sweet potato chips also Yes. And yesterday, if you remember, um, audience who were tuning in, we um, had um, breadfruit um, as well. We talked about breadfruit yesterday, and we had breadfruit flour in our planting croquettes. Exactly. So you, what you would do, you would dehydrate this and then grind it into flour. Exactly, and it's very healthy for those healthy conscious individuals right. out there, like Chef Nathaniel, of course. Yeah, right. And so where would you get a breadfruit from, say, if you were not in Grenada? I mean, we have them this all around, you know, driving around in Grenada. You can see breadfruits everywhere. It's breadfruit season now. But if you're in the U.S. or you're in Europe or you're in the U.K., um, would you be able to go to, like, yes. your local, like... West Indian market. And they, they, there's, so, there's so many of them all over. And even the uh, Asian uh, markets uh, also might have the breadfruit because... In Hawaii and in Asia, um, there is breadfruit um, as well. I, I believe it's a different name, but you know what it looks like. We showed you what it looks like. And well, it is the, not similar to the jackfruit. No, it's not. The jackfruit is also very similar to our local breadfruit, but it is much bigger. And right? longer. And, and longer, and, and, and the flavor seeds. is different. Yes. The very huge seeds. The, our local breadfruit does not have the seeds as the jackfruit might have. So as, as it is, Quite wonderful. So we're gonna get started because I'm ready to eat. I don't know. I, we're, we're gonna um, get back um, to see something plated. Um, is this the plate for it? Yes, it is. Okay, so we're gonna um, get started uh, in a bit. Um, plating that up. I'm not sure how much time we have left, but I definitely want to make sure that we are ready. Man. We get this part sorted. Oh, you even you even go to the end and you just. just really just get the last of that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Hard to get it. That is yes. a free Go to the last drop. <laughs> See, you realize you're looking a little lighter than yes. it was the first time. Right. I mean, the milk come out there already. Great. And I guess you are also doing something with your, um, with your breadfruit, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I mean, may I put the breadfruit inside of the mm -hmm. turmeric? Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I wonder, um, do we have any, any questions out there? Anybody want to um, ask Chef Nathaniel or Chef um, Miguel any questions about their dish? We will make sure that it is available. The recipe is available on our site. Um, we will put it up later on. But if you have any questions um, about these two dishes or about these two chefs, these two amazing chefs, please go ahead and, and type in the comment box. Okay, lighten it up again. All right, Chef Miguel. How's that cocoa tea? Because you know I have my cup here waiting. I can see that. And what we usually do, we just let it boil for a while. And what I did, I load the heat a bit so it does not boil over. Okay. And how we serve our cocoa tea here in the Caribbean, we use condensed milk. Okay. Right? But I know that there are some people who don't use milk. Yes. I am one of those people. 
I I had used coconut milk and it's oh it's so amazing. So you can utilize the coconut milk That's if you right. utilize the almond milk. That's right. Um, which is right here. Yes. Right. We and can utilize some of the coconut milk. Could we use like some of the coconut milk to have maybe two? So we could give like a contemporary and a traditional cocoa tea. We could, but we're gonna have to do that later. <laughs> <laughs> well, we maybe could save some back. Uh, maybe could save some back for us. Let's see. How take can a we cup. Can we take a so cup out? What we what we gonna do? Okay then. We're just gonna strain off just some. Oh, you have to strain it off as well, right? Yes, yeah. Because we want, we don't want that grime from the cocoa itself, mm -hmm. right? And I know most people don't like to feel that 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 griminess, that yeah, that that, grits, right? that grit in in their mouth. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do we're just gonna go ahead and strain off some of this cocoa right here. Wow, you have a nice easy hand there. I do. Mm -hmm. Chefs have wonderful hands. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> Right? You know, there's a saying that we could also be doctors, you know. Ah, well, we're doctors. Right? Doctors, you definitely are. <laughs> yes, we are. We're in the social doctors. Uh, you have to know a lot um, about um, food, and this is something that, so, so that's to just put it right inside the cup like Yes. Okay. And then we just give it a, a quick stir. Right? Most people may not like it that sweet. Mm -hmm. Most people might not like even the, the milk in it at all. Mm -hmm. That's true. So if you don't, okay, so, um, we're always trying to, as much as we love our heritage, trying to look at things that we could do a little bit different to make us a little bit more healthier, and especially with the sugar, and you know, we're known for having lots of diabetes in the Caribbean. So if we wanted to do an alternative and not use condensed milk, how could we do that? What What's another good milk that we could use? Well, we could use, um, as I said, the almond milk, or even the coconut milk, right? And we could use, um, Honey as a sweetener, right? So we don't all have to use the, the sweetened condensed milk, which mm -hmm. is um, high in lots of fat in most cases or so, mm -hmm. right? Most people don't like it because it's an animal based product, right? right? So we could use almond milk, we could use the coconut milk, we could, we could also get, we even have the oat milk oh, also that yeah. you yeah. utilize instead of the condensed milk, and we could use our local sweeteners like honey, mm -hmm. for example. Because the oat milk doesn't have such a over flavor yeah. so yeah. then if if you mix that with the cocoa tea you're gonna get the full flavor of oh, the, the cocoa, cocoa tea, coming through not, without yeah. the the flavor of the coconut or, or the almond if you don't yeah. like that nutty flavor i have a really right. strange question would you say that soy milk could be used in this as well yes it can be used okay um one question <laughs> that's, that's, i'm sure something that people are asking some <laughs> questions so let's hear it <laughs> From, from Ms. Matisse, she asked, how oh, does she get her share? She's very hungry. Uh, <laughs> how does she get? Her oh, share, well, she's there, very hungry. There is always, um, there's Liat, <laughs> right? We could FedEx it, oh. right? There are different ways in which we could actually ensure that she gets her share. Oh, you know, I'm we, sure a lot of our viewers out there are very much hungry right now. That's right. I'm, no, I'm right here and I'm hungry right now. So let's get started. We don't have much time left. So we want to make sure we get everything uh, on the plate, right? Sorry. Right. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just I um, already went ahead and cut off some of um, my breadfruit right here, right? And I'm gonna utilize the breadfruit oh, itself to that. plate our dish here today. Wow, okay. And this is like charcoal, isn't it? Yes, also. but in most cases, chars are like if you're using barbecue or so, mm -hmm. it's a bit healthy for you also. Mm -hmm. Right, high in minerals, right? Okay, so looking forward to so what we're gonna go ahead and do is just give this a quick wipe off. The board? No. Mm -hmm. Right, because we're looking for a clean finish, of course. Of course. Mm It's going to topple over. I guess there's some pieces here for me. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and place some of our small parang on top. All right? Oh, on top? Yeah. Okay, so just going to have this right here. You can look at that. Oh, 
<laughs> so we can also utilize some of the um the oils from the corn oil because as you know it's very healthy right we're just gonna drizzle some on top here wow look at that mm -hmm. right i know some people they love this smoker in so much that they also want to have some that's on me. the plate that's me. Well, I and, that, have some on the and that should fill in the of course <laughs> Oh, look at that. Yes. That's, right That's what I'm talking Beautiful. about. That is what I am talking about. Wow. So, the garnish. 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 So, I'm going to take this plate, and we're going to go and have some blue tea in a short minute. So okay. Come over here, Chef Nathaniel. Look at these pretty carrots and ginger. Oh, look at that. Beautiful carrots. And the ginger scented, as you say. I've got in Chef Nathaniel. How long did you wait for the carrots to fully cook? Probably like 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. On just the right heat. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see you cut open your, um, your bird food there. We missed that. Look at that. You need a little too fast for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna come around here, sorry. Mmm, smell. Sweet smell, sweet smell. That's the way you can do it. If you put the carrots and put them in here. Certainly will. Yes. Wow, beautiful inside. Yeah. Okay. The beans should be right on the way. You don't put the beans too much in there, you know? Mm -hmm. Al dente. Yes, sir. And al dente means to the minute. And so the, the vegetables are crunchy. And we also use that term with rice, and we use that term with pasta. 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 But here in the Caribbean, we use that those terms for vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the, the the ginger that you have here, I think it, it kind of blends with the oil, and the the flavor is just incorporated into the vegetables. So could you just recap what we have in the um the saffron sauce here? Well, in this sauce here, we mm. have we started off with the seasoning onions, garlic, seasoning peppers, chives, thyme. Um, and we just put on some turmeric to 
simmer down with that and we added some coconut milk to the finish and put our bread feet in there just to soak in that goodness. Mm -hmm. Love the goodness. And what we have in this dish here, Chef Blender? In the dish there, yeah. there's a caldo that mm -hmm. we steam down for the little while. In the, in the, right, right. We steam it down with um, the coconut yes. milk, peppers, onions, um, a little basil. And is there any thyme in here, Chef? Yes, and and thyme as well. Okay. Ooh, wow, look at that. Oh, that looks amazing. It doesn't right? it, doesn't it? It also brings back memory of our local oil on too. That it does. That is where the whole inspiration comes from. Right, of course. <laughs> With no meat. With no meat. No, meat. no, no meat, fish. You know? <laughs> and then you have the vegetables on the side. Yep. Um, which I which I love. So you actually putting it all in, putting it all in one plate. Fantastic. Wow. I mean, I hope all these vibrant colors. The more more colorful your food is, the better it is for you, and you build up your immune system. And during this time, we want to make sure that we have. Can I, Mayor? Yes. We're just going to drizzle some of the sauce uh -huh. on that. Oh, yeah. yes. That's my favorite part. Can't leave all the sauce. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite part. And oil down, my favorite part is the sauce. Okay. So that is, there you have it. And we're just going to clean it up, of course, because we want to make sure it looks good. Uh huh. Can we set them side by side so we can Absolutely. just. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this way. And even if you want um, some vegetables on the side, you can have that as well. Well, guys, there you have it. Live from the Tower Estate. If you want to have any of this experience, this is where you can find it, right here in Grenada. Call 435-1579. I will put you in touch with uh, Chef Nathaniel if you want some um, ital um, lunches and dinners, and or if you want something from Chef Miguel at Flavors from Flavors of Grenada. Remember I told you about the blue tea? Yes, so we're gonna go over and check it out now. We know that it's kind of, um, it's kind of now a little uh, ready for us. Be careful there. Follow us over here. <laughs> I've got a butterfly on my um, camera. Oh, He's sitting that. right on the camera. Uh, does everybody see you? Yeah, like as I'm taking the shot. I can't see you because there's uh, a butterfly. Okay, so maybe I should, there he goes, he goes away. <laughs> and here's our blue tea, really good for you. If you want the blue tea, you have to come down to the home of the blue tea right here in Grenada, West Indies, where everything is fabulous. So we are at the, the Tower Estate in St. Paul. in St. Paul's mm -hmm. in Grenada, in, Gren in St. George's. That's right. Perfect. and the, and. And the blue matches your top perfectly, oh, Chef Belinda. It. <laughs> oh, it is delicious. 
And this is supposed to be also good for high um, blood pressure as well, um, to reduce your blood pressure. And um, I think it's, it's we, I've made cocktails with this, which is quite amazing. That might raise your blood pressure, but it's also an amazing um, treat, but very good for you. Can I say goodbye to the chefs and take Absolutely. a little walk? Okay. Chef Nathaniel, Chef Miguel, thank you yes, so much. Yes, Would you yes, like to say goodbye to our viewers? All right. Thank bye, you. Bye, See you so. soon. And tune in tomorrow. I, that's right. Tomorrow. Tune in tomorrow. Perfect. Can yeah, we take? In, yes, you're going to tune in tomorrow, same, same time. We're having a little technical difficulties. Bear with us. But we will have Chef Andre in, um, from here, from Grenada, from his wonderful kitchen. And then Chef Elvis from Nevis. He is Grenadian that's living in Nevis. And making a lot of flavor there. So we're signing off for now, but hope to see you tomorrow.